Okay, welcome everyone to a special show today. We're here to talk about exciting times in our neighborhood once again. And so much to share with the community about the upcoming event, the dedication of the monument for Martin Luther King Jr., long anticipated. It's been an effort of the city. It's been an effort of downtown and an entire community, hasn't it, Lance? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, and, and I know you're proud to see things like this come to, to light and come actually to happen uh, under your administration. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's been a real good experience working with all the different groups. Mm -hmm. um, tourism has really sort of brought everybody together that was interested. Uh, First AB Church has just been great to work with, mm -hmm. and everybody's been excited and worked hard toward the goal. So, mm -hmm. Rebecca, I know you're excited. You put a lot of hard work into this. Very along along with a lot of people, the the support not only from you know Dublin, um, but also from the Department of Economic Development. You know they gave us five tourism grants, and that really kicked it off. You know it it helped grow the project. Downtown Development Authority got on board. Um, Orient Planning and Design. It just it grew from a very static kind of monument to like to now it's it takes up a, has revitalized a whole corner of downtown and really created that gateway and it took a lot of partners mm -hmm. yeah and everything coming together and we're coming up on the dedication of that but as we think back through the community and people who grew up here people who have uh, been a part of the community for many 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 years uh, there was always talk of, of the speech that was given, I guess, Lance, and you may recount of, of your time growing up here and, and in years past, but, but never the, the definite, okay, here it is with the plaque, the monument, and the, the dedication. Right. I, I mean, I had heard that, but it was one of those things you wonder, is that really true? Is yeah. that just a story we like to tell? Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, it's, it's in his autobiography, so he says it. And if Martin Luther King says it, we can be pretty sure that was it is true. This is where he gave his first public speech. Yes. So. And, and what a rich part of history and the fact that it's going to bring in more tourism, the fact that it's listed throughout the nation, uh, will be listed all over as a historical site. So when yep. people travel this way, they'll know to stop and, and to see this beautiful monument that's been erected. Yeah, the city and First African Baptist Church have been working very hard on getting the church listed on the National Historic Registry, and we, about a month ago, got word that it, it, it flew through um, the Georgia process, and now it's going to, to the National Register for review. So we're, we're, we're excited about that. And when you speak to other communities, Lance, I know people ask you about this. I know it's exciting to be able to share that, but what's their impression of it? Uh, that, I, I tell you, when we go to other towns, um, people are really recognize Dublin as, as having things going on. I mean, and it, this, this project is just one example. I, I've been to several things lately uh, where we're trying to gather information from other folks, and they ask us, why are you here? You know, we need to be coming to Dublin to learn. <laughs> and uh, that just, uh, it's humbling, you know, to, to, uh, to know that you're, you're looked at that way. Um, well, we're, I think everybody in Dublin right now is working together so hard to make the city a better place. Um, and at the monument is just one great example of that. People ride through and see it and say, how did they get that done? You know, we couldn't get that done because it'd be too much fighting. But uh, mm -hmm. Dublin comes together and gets it done. Yeah. So. yeah. And, and so let's talk about the people from the origin of it now, from the very beginning of the planning that's been involved with it. Oh, wow. Um, well, from the very beginning, you know, Scott Thompson with the Historical Society um, had a Google kind of ping set on Dublin, and he was actually the one that in 2010 went to the Georgia Department of Economic Development's resource team that came here and visited Dublin. So that was the first mention. And then Probably about three years ago, First African Baptist Church, the city, Downtown Development Authority, Visit Dublin, we all kind of got together and started talking about, you know, what we were going to do, that we needed to do something a little bit bigger than, than just the plaque on the wall, that we really, truly wanted to make it an experience for visitors. Um, so we started meeting monthly and 
from there, it just started sparking interest from partners all across the state. Um, you know, we started with this very simple kind of plan, and then Orion Planning and Design got on board and just revolutionized the look and the feel and the experience of the site. Downtown Development Authority purchased the property um, where the Monument Park now is, so that allowed us to make it even bigger. Um, and the church, I mean, I can't speak highly enough of, of the committee members, you know, we have a question, they're right there um, researching, and, and Deborah Stanley with the city is right there, you know, bringing that community development edge, edge. and then Wayne McCary with the city engineering just, I mean, I think he's really taken this project to heart. And he's out there probably once mm -hmm. a day making sure that everything is just right um, and that the function of the site is, is spot on. So it's just a whole, I think this is the biggest partnership um, that I have ever seen in a community, and it does speak so well of Dublin that whenever there's a question, you know, there's five people there ready to help put this on, and I've never experienced collaboration like this with a project. No, I, I, when we first started having meetings, there'd be, and there still are, 15 people plus in the room, and when, when, when I walk into a room and see a committee of 15 people, I think nothing is going to happen. Mm -hmm. This is nothing is going to happen. <laughs> but it, every, it, I mean, it just, it proved me wrong, because everybody works together and gets it done. It's, it's been a wonderful experience. We'll take a short break and be back. We're talking about the Martin Luther King Jr. Monument, the, the actual dedication of the event coming up really soon. We're going to tell you more about it and how you, be, you can become involved in just a moment. You could be this guy, impressing your kids with your tech savviness thanks to the Uconnect Theater in your Chrysler Pacifica. Or you could be that guy. Can we do all your video games right from here? Nope. Enough said. See Dublin Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram today at 2054 US 441 in Dublin. Call 272-3500 or 1-800-GO-DODGE. Where's everyone going this early in the morning? It's breakfast time at Dairy Queen with the best biscuits around. Try our mouth-watering sausage egg biscuits or our delicious country ham or chicken biscuits and bacon and egg with hot grits and hash browns. And top it all off with your favorite drink. Start your morning off with all your friends and the friendliest staff anywhere. It's breakfast time every morning, 6 till 10.30 a.m. at Dairy Queen on East Jackson Street in Dublin. This spring, pick your power. Steel fuel-powered equipment is the number one selling brand in America, and steel lightning battery systems deliver the power to do more on a single charge. Right now, you can pick fuel or battery at a great price, with trimmers starting at just $129.95. Or choose one of our popular, easy-to-use blowers starting at just $139.95. Pick your power, and then pick up a steel. Visit steeldealers.com. Okay, welcome you back uh, here with Lance and also Rebecca. The collaboration, as you say, has really come together. So many people into a room, and uh, when you walk around the community, people are talking about the event coming up, how beautiful the monument looks, the availing of it all. Um, so let's talk about the date and how the community can become involved with it. The, it, the opening is scheduled for April 17th at 2 p.m. Um, we have people coming from across the state. Um, there are two kind of surprises that are going to be unveiled that day. Um, we have uh, Corey Barksdale coming down from Atlanta. He's the artist who painted the, the big mural on the side of the wall. Randall Gearhart um, has also worked on a project for us. Uh, he's a local photographer and graphic artist, and that's going to be unveiled. Um, so you'll really get to hear from the people and the artists and, and the people that have been kind of working behind the scenes to make this happen that day. Okay, and so we'll start at 2 o'clock now. From what I understand, there's going to be several uh, events taking place, not only mm -hmm. with that, but local community choirs, 
things such as that. So tell us a, kind of the, the format of the day. Um, Dr. Angela Stanley will be will be performing for us. Um, we have Haven Stanley, who is a um, Dublin Middle School student, who's going to do an oratory, uh -huh. oratory that day. Um, he is one of the young men that recorded Dr. King's speech for us as part of the audio tour that we're doing. Um, so it's just going to be a really good day for all of us to come together and kind of celebrate Dr. King's legacy and hopefully inspire everybody's that, everybody who's there to kind of look at how they can take his message and really apply it to their lives. Um, and then we'll kind of wrap up. We have a surprise. Um, Oliver who is the president of YKK AP Nationals Office is coming down from Atlanta and he's really going to be talking about the next steps of the project and kind of um, issuing a challenge to, to locals and, and people across the region to, to really um, inspire them. So I don't want to yeah. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> Throw too yeah, much out there. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's really exciting that this is a project that continues to grow and get bigger, and and it's 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 truly been a blessing to be able to be a part of it. Makes you proud of the community, mm -hmm. doesn't it? On well, so much of the funding, it has been the the city. The city's involvement has mostly been sort of in kind services, like the building behind there. We, we're taking it down ourselves. Um, but the uh, tremendous amount of the money is coming from from the public. There's a GoFundMe site. Uh, the church is contributing so much. Just donations from businesses, banks in town. It's been uh, really good to see this funded from the community. You know, people want it when they're willing to put their money there. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's been a. Uh, uh, Love seeing that, especially as a man has to do the city budget. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it has really, it really, it just shows the community supports it. Yeah. You know, makes your heart feel good though for our community to come together over such a worthwhile cause and the healing process that comes in, in in turn with it, and how our community just shows love to one another. It really is an example. And, and hopefully it'll carry throughout the state and the nation, maybe even the world. Definitely. Yeah. That, that's our hope. You know, when we're, we're sitting in, in these committee meetings and we're talking about it, I think we all know this isn't just Dublin's Monument Park. We're really doing this for future generations and, and for the world. And, you know, the eyes of not only of Georgia are on Dublin with this project, but it really is a project that the nation and especially international tourists just love to to visit. Already, you know, we've had visitors from Canada and Mexico and Europe, and it, it's just been amazing to see how that message is kind of eternal, um, and how you know his work is still going on even though he's no longer with us. So. It's it's really cool. Yeah, it speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. This this spot is still there and still pretty much exactly like it was when he made his mm -hmm. speech. Um, that's pretty amazing. And, and I'm sure uh, the members of First Baptist, the leadership, the pastor, they they're so excited about that at First AB. They truly are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so we look forward to that day and we look forward to people coming in from all over the state, maybe outside of the state for this dedication. We won't give it all away. <laughs> but uh, what should we remind the general public? What should we remind the people at the interstate, at, at uh, convenience stores, at local restaurants, at businesses about these people coming in? And everyone, what should we do for our community? You know, just, just find, um, you know, those people that are on the front lines in the gas stations and in the hotels. Dublin, Dublin is special and Dublin is unique. Um, and, you know, there's, everybody has a reason why they love Dublin and share that reason. Um, there's always something going on here. Um, as Lance has said, there's so much momentum here and so much love for this community. Um, and, you know, just, just sharing that and sharing, you know, Dublin has a good heart. And um, the more we can get that message out, the more people will come and the more money will come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Lance we, loves yeah, that. Yeah, right, right. Well, we all are looking forward to the, the tourism part of it. And, and, the, the experience that people will have by being able to come to the monument and the reflection that it will give upon Dublin, 
Uh, I know we're all excited about that uh, because it can truly make a difference in people's mm -hmm. lives to, to come there. It'll make a difference in many people I trust. But when we look at that day two o'clock, now a lot of people are going to show up. Are, are we planning to cordon off a, a section of of tail fare coming in there? Uh, yeah, we're going to divert some of the traffic around on tail fare. I, I don't think it'll cause any con real inconvenience on tail fare street. Mm -hmm. you, you'll be able to drive down tail fare street since it's three lanes. We're going to block off one lane mm -hmm. to make it safer. Mm -hmm. And church street right there for that block will be closed. But mm -hmm. uh, traffic wise, I don't think you have to worry about it. No, uh, no, no real alerts out there to keep you off tail fare street. Just remember, the traffic might be a little congested, slow down, and <laughs> slow down and stop and come yeah. to the unveil. Right. <laughs> you know, one, of, one of the questions I've been asked, you know, are, are children invited? And, and we do want to make sure that families bring their kids out for this. And because it is, it is one of those historic moments. 20 years from now, we'll look back and, and you know, it, it, as this project grows, April 17th is is the date in 1944 that Dr. King gave his speech here. So we're kind of continuing that tradition and, and marking that anniversary. So please do bring your children and kind of experience it. We've, we've got some things that the kids will enjoy and we're just looking forward to seeing everyone there. All right. We trust that everyone will mark the calendars on the 17th there at 2 o'clock mm -hmm. and uh, be down on Church Street in front of First African Baptist Church and enjoy the day of celebration and uh, the, the hard work that has gone into it, the planning and the wisdom that, that the committee has, has put into it. It really is something for our community to be excited about and, and going forward. I want to ask one more question, though, on, on the building next to it. Uh, you referred to a little bit earlier about taking that down. What, what's the? Well, we're taking down. There's a, there were there are two buildings. There's the one that the mural is on, and that one's we're not doing with it. There, there was a smaller building in the back that uh, we did take down, and that's going to be a, a we believe a parking area mm -hmm. um, and some landscaping back there. And uh, I know they've had a lot of inquiries about the building on the front and what to do with it and and how best to use it. So. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't know if Rebecca's yeah. got anything news or anything definitive there. No but. news, but I would encourage everyone with with those ideas to reach out. Um, we've had ideas, everything from a gift shop to kind of a museum to um, a restaurant. Um, and Tara Bradshaw with the Downtown Development Authority is feel, fielding all of those requests. So if anyone has any ideas or, or some potential uses for the building, feel free to reach out to Tara. Um, she's, she's very interested in hearing what people would like to see there. Okay, so we have a, a few days before the, mm -hmm. the dedication of the monument. Uh, this will be over the air, it'll be online, so people will be able to watch it all over. How would they get in contact and get more information about that? Um, they can reach out to us, uh, Visit Dublin. They can email me at Rebecca at VisitDublinGA.com or they can call 478-272-4002. We'll also have um, the in first initial press release should go live sometime tomorrow. Um, and we will be streaming the, the ceremony live on both our Facebook and Periscope accounts. So if anyone, you know, gets stuck in the office and can't make it, they can definitely tune into it on Facebook. Wonderful. Well, we look forward to being there as well. And thank you, Rebecca, thank very you. much. Thank you, Lance, for what Welcome. you do for our community. Thank you for joining us right here on TV 35.